Welcome. Welcome to the party. Let's bring you in a little tighter. Hello. Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't know how to act because I'm kind of excited. But it's also been a while that I'm like, hey, old friends, I promise I haven't, like, just forgot about you. We're doing a week of workouts again. Okay, finally. Which, in my defense, I really was going to film this last week. And I had such a busy day on Monday. And I didn't get to the gym until, like, 5, 5.30. Brought my camera. I was like, it's going to be busy in there, but I'm still going to try to record, blah, 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 blah. I go to turn on my camera. I didn't have an SD card. And I said, the uni just says not this week. So here we are again this week. So if this is your first week of workouts that you're seeing from me, welcome. Welcome to the party, because this is qu quite the party, I will say. Uh, my name is Olivia. I'm a certified personal trainer. I've been training for six years now, which is wild to say every time I say that I'm like damn and basically I'm just gonna be sharing with you guys a week of my workouts I do not do the same workouts every single solitary week um so each time it's going to look different but this is just my current week of workouts in terms of what I've been doing I've been keeping the same split my goal right now in terms of just like physique and fitness goals is just to kind of maintain where I'm at I don't have really any crazy performance goals strength goals or body goals I just have been kind of maintaining which I think that it's important to share with you guys that you know, it's okay to just want to be and like not feel like you need to change something or change your body. I think it's just a very realistic point of when you're training for so long. And that's something that I really struggled with when I was working through my fitness journey in those beginning years. I was constantly like bulking and cutting, bulking and cutting, which nothing is wrong with that. I just was always left unsatisfied and I kind of ended up craving a sense of kind of balance and just like feeling at peace with where I am now. Just the reality of it is there are mundane periods when it comes to your fitness journey, which is totally okay. It's just part of the process. So my actual workout split has still been pretty consistent. I've been moving about five days a week, I want to say. So Monday is still legs. I've still been doing kind of total leg focus for the most part. If I find that one leg day is more glute and ham focused, I'll make sure to have more like quad isolation ones. And the next workout, it's kind of been very free flowing. Tuesday has been still total upper body. I'm not looking to really build any muscle mass on my upper body anymore. So I just am kind of looking to maintain the current muscle I have now and maintain strength just to help me be an overall better athlete and a healthy individual. Wednesday, I've still been doing at-home Pilates. I'll do like a 30-minute Pilates class on YouTube or something that I just really enjoy. It's been giving me a lot of body weight strength, a lot of ab strength and ab control, which I've been really liking. Thursday is leg day again. And then Friday, I've been doing my full body functional days again, which I've missed because I was so inconsistent with them for so long. So I've been doing that again. Um, and then in terms of my overall like step goal, I haven't had a strict one, but realistically, I'm probably walking like four to five days a week for anywhere between like 20 minutes. And then sometimes it's like an hour. It just really depends on the weather, the time I have and how I'm feeling. So I've I've been very much so in kind of a maintenance free flowing part of my fitness journey right now. I don't really have any sort of organized cardio either that really is only coming from the full body functional days because that has very much so a cardiovascular component. My heart rate gets up and that's really mainly for my heart health there. I feel like that's everything. Every time I do these intros, I'm like, did I say that, 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 that? And I think I did. So here we go. Welcome to leg day. Alrighty, so no matter what workout I'm doing, I always start with some foam roll action just because it really helps me get a nice big stretch. And I swear this has helped so much with my like spinal flexibility and spinal mobility, like especially my thoracic spine. So I will really just roll out from like the top of my back, like my shoulder blades to about the middle of my back and never go down towards my lower back. And then I like to flip over and this feels so freaking good in my shoulder joints. Like my shoulder always gets super tight. So I like to kind of roll around and like roll my shoulder in the joint it just feels good and that also helps to get a little stretch in my lat as well so then I always move in to mobility work because you always want to start with some like dynamic stretches meaning stress stretches that you're taking your body through a movement in the beginning of your workout you never really want to start with static stretches because you want to prep your body for movement so first I started off with those really low frog squats and then I go up into a toe grab and it's really key to make sure you're trying to keep a nice long spine at the bottom of that squat and then I went into some low lateral lunge Again, really trying to making sure I'm allowing my hips to open up and get that stretch in my groin. Those were 90-90 rotations where you basically keep your heels planted and then try to bring your knees down from side to side to open up your hips. And then this one is a new one that I've been doing that I love. It's called the world's greatest stretch. You essentially take your elbow, touch the ground, rotate up towards the sky, 
probably get some spinal rotation and then you come back on your hamstring and it opens up literally everything. It's such a good full body stretch. I love it. And then this is just some more hip openers. Basically, as you can tell, I just did a bunch of hip openers because my hips are always really tight and it has helped a lot with having better range of motion on leg day. And so then I finished off with this one. This is for more ankle mobility to help with my squat depth. So essentially, I'm just trying to drive my knee as far forward as I can while keeping my heel on the ground. And that's what's really going to help with getting a greater stretch and more ankle mobility when you are in your squat. So from there, the first exercise I did was a barbell RDL. And so I always start with warm up sets as well. Don't ever start cold people. That used to be me. And looking back, like now I'm like, I could never just jump into my working weight. So a warm up set is just a set with light weight before you actually get into your normal working weight for your working set. So I did one set of 12. Here I am tossing on my wrist straps. These I'll have linked in the description box below. You can find them on Amazon. I'm obsessed with them. They help me so much with making sure that I could lift heavy weight without having my grip strength really give out. So in terms of form RDLs, the biggest thing here is to initiate the movement by pushing your hips back. I say that every single time for a reason. This isn't a movement where you're just bending over. It is a hip hinging movement, meaning that you need to initiate the moves by hinging at your hips. And in order to do that, you want to push your hips backwards like you're trying to hit the back wall. Another way to look at it is if someone has a big resistance band around your hips and are pulling your hips backwards. That's what's going to inevitably allow your torso to fall forward as opposed to you just bending over right and my spine is nice and neutral I'm keeping it nice and long there's no flexion or curvature in my back my neck is pretty much in line with my spine and as I am pushing my weight my hips back excuse me it's forcing me to push my weight back onto my heels which is what you always want to do because then that's going to allow you to drive up through your heels, squeezing your hamstrings, squeezing your glutes and having you have a good contraction. So here I am. I now I am on a little like platform to help me get a little bit more depth and range of motion because these are big plates and I found that I could go deeper. So this is just for me to help increase my range of motion. Now here I did three sets of eight of one and one half RDL. So the form is the exact same as what I just said, but we're going to include a half a rep for every single rep. So as you can see, I'm coming down, coming back up and stopping at my knee, returning back down to the full extension of the movement and then driving all the way up for a full contraction. Now, now, it's really important to keep a nice slight bend in your leg to protect your knee. The more bend you have in your leg, the more glute focus it's going to be because there's less stress and less stretch, I should say, on your hamstrings. And the straighter your legs are, the more emphasis it is going to be on your hamstring because there's a greater stretch in your hamstring. Another thing is you want to make sure you're keeping that weight nice and close to your legs the whole time. You don't want the weight to be kind of flopping out because that's what's also going to cause some more stress on your low back. So Keep that weight grazing the front of your shins and front of your thighs and really think about squeezing your glutes and driving up through those heels to have a really good mind to muscle connection. After that, we moved into decline bench myo rep hip thrusts. So here I am doing just my warm up sets again. I did it with two different weights just so I can work up to my working weight for the normal sets. So in terms of form, you always want to make sure the barbell pad is in the center of the bar and that the barbell pad is in the center of your lap so you can actually be stable when you lift the weight up. Then you're going to scrunch your legs up. A little trick is to put your heels where the crease of your knee is when your legs are completely flat out. I also kind of like to shimmy up so that the, the middle of my back is pretty much touching that bench so I can just push up right away. And then I drive up through my heels and push up against my back on the bench to lift that weight up. You want to position your feet, like I said, so they're about directly under your knee, give or take. You want to play around with that. Here, my legs, my feet were a little bit too far in and I really was feeling it in my quad. So for me, I needed to scooch my heels out just to skosh so they were just past my knee. This is going to be super individual for everyone, but generally the farther your feet are are out the more you're going to feel it in your hamstrings the closer your heels are to your bum the more you're going to feel it in your quads so you want to find that sweet spot so you can really feel it in your glutes I'm constantly looking forward I'm keeping my chin tucked to my chest and I'm really focusing on scooping up my hips by contracting my glutes so as you just saw that was a myo rep variation so meaning I did 10 normal reps of hip thrusts I put the weight back down and I took a breather for about like five really good deep breaths and then I lift the weight back up for five more reps. This is brutal. With that being said, this is going to be 15 reps total. So you're going to want to lower your weight. This is not my max out weight at all. I always go a little bit lower when I am doing a Maya rep variation, but this one will make your booty burn. Trust me. <laughs> 
Then moving into a curtsy lunge. I don't think I ever really have showed you guys this or I don't, I feel like I haven't really done this often on my channel because I haven't done them in a while. I used to do these all the time in college and I love them and then I kind of, got lost in a different avenue but like these worked for me so well and I do really really love them so I hear I did three sets of eight to ten now a curtsy lunge is going to be very similar to a normal reverse lunge also let's not talk about how dirty my socks are moving forward it's similar to a reverse lunge however you're basically moving you're putting your back leg at like a 45 degree angle like at a diagonal behind you as opposed to you stepping straight back what is the value in this the goal in this and the intention with this exercise is to hit your glute medius which is kind of like your outer upper portion of your glute right where I'm touching right there you can see I feel it like crazy and it really burns because it gets such a good stretch there so again you want to be careful I'm not putting on a ton of weight because it's not really in the best position to be loading a lot of weight so go at a moderate weight here your knees should still be relatively stacked over your ankle in a fixed position and you really should only be focusing on pushing that hip out to the side also with a slight forward torso lean and that's what's going to get you the optimal best stretch in that upper outer portion of your glutes as always driving up through that front legs heel and really 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 focus on the mind to muscle connection here touch that upper outer portion of your glute if you need to but I promise you it's a really good one and I was really sore after this workout and what's also important is you want to make sure that you're still staying square so my hips are square to the front of the room my shoulders are still square I'm not my whole torso and body isn't turning at a 45 degree angle I'm staying square just I'm pushing my back leg back at a 45 degree angle this is what's what's really going to get you that stretch in your glute from there, I moved into glute focused hyperextensions for three sets of 15. So this is basically going to be working our glutes primarily to build that shelf. You're also going to be feeling it in your hamstrings and your lower back will also be firing. But to help to shift the emphasis away from that low back and more towards your glute and hamstrings, you want to tuck your chin and round your back. This is like literally the only exercise I think that I tell people to round your back. But this is going to shift the stress and sh shift the emphasis to your glutes, which is what we want. So it's also helpful to point your toes out at about a 45 degree angle as well and I'm holding a plate just for some added difficulty if you find your lower back still really hurting or like kind of burning out before your glutes are have a shorter range of motion so don't go down as far stop about halfway through and really slow down the movement and focus again on that mind to muscle connection really think about your glutes contracting to bring up your torso as opposed to you depending on your lower back and lastly, I finished off with some hamstring work. So I just did the leg curl machine for three sets of about 10 to 12. Most important with this machine is you don't want your hips to be driving up because that's pretty much kind of defeating the purpose. So I try to picture myself like driving my hips into the pad to really allow me to isolate that hamstring, which is the goal here by driving my heels up towards my bum. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday. We were about to leave to go to the gym and I almost forgot an SD card again. And I was like, nope, we're not doing that again. That was last week's issue, not this week's issue. So we're good to go. Fresh battery, fresh formatted SD card. I'm feeling good and fresh and rejuvenated. Today we're gonna hit some upper body. I do normally hit complete upper body on this day just because like I said, I'm not looking to really grow any more upper body muscle or anything like that or build any more muscle. I don't know why I said grow. I just wanna maintain where I'm at. And for me, I find that just this is the appropriate amount of volume for me right now with just that suiting my upper body goals. Also, I think I'm supposed to be getting a package on what it says it's delivered. So let's see if it's here. I'm gonna get let down. Damn, it's not here yet, but it says it's out for delivery. Insert sad music here. How sad, except mm, I can't get my hopes up, but I'm like, maybe it's in the mailbox. Ugh. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with everybody. I'm a little bit sweaty already. Okay, for various reasons. And second of all, I just had the best dance party of my entire life to Akon. This is your beloved reminder of the beloved Akon. He just is such a, he's such a bop. And I just jammed so hard to him. I'm so hyped and like, I'm ready. I, if I could, I would just go dance the whole time working out in there, but like, we'll see what the vibe is. And I'm just so freaking hooked. And I just want to dance the whole time. Alrighty, getting into upper body day. So same thing here with the foam roller rolling the back out, 
getting a little bit of shoulder stretch in there. I promise though, please try this one where you're like facing down because it feels so freaking good just everywhere. And I really will try to press down and like really get that arch in my back as I roll forward. It just feels phenomenal everywhere. And the gym was absolutely packed this day. So I usually do a little bit more extensive warm up here, but this was pretty much it. I just grabbed this pole and did some more like kind of shoulder rotations just again to help with my shoulder mobility because I feel like my shoulder joint always has, it's a little bit gunky in there. So that's usually what I like to focus on most before upper body days. So I basically grabbed a barbell and a pair of dumbbells bells and went to the corner and did my thing. So I started off with a barbell row for three sets of 12. You're going to hear me say this pretty much this whole entire workout, but you want to, when you're even lifting up the weights, you want to drop your shoulders away from your ears, or you can think of it as retracting your shoulder blades back and down. This is what's going to engage your back muscles and help with mind to muscle connection. Now I have a forward lean. Obviously my neck is in line with my spine, my neck, my, excuse me, my spine is nice and flat. And I'm essentially driving that barbell towards my hips while keeping my elbows in towards my side. You don't want your elbows to flare out. And I also have an underhand grip there. So I superseted that with an Arnold press for three sets of 12. Basically all that means is you're going to start with the dumbbells like by your chin with your palms facing towards you. Then as you raise the barbells up towards the sky, you're going to rotate your palms so that they're facing away from you. Your elbows are pretty much directly in front of you the whole time. You're not like doing this out towards the side. The dumbbell should be right in front of your face in that frontal plane. And like I said, I did that for three sets of 12. So you're going to be doing both of those back to back. Once you finish both exercises, you'll rest and then you'll begin the superset again for a total of three times. From there, I wanted to do a vertical pull exercise for the back. So I did some chin ups for three sets of as many reps as possible. Same thing when I get into the position, I have my palms facing towards me. So it is a chin up position chin up hand grip, I should say. And I'm retracting my shoulder blades back and down, dropping my shoulders away from my ears to activate my back muscles, to activate my lats. And then I'm going to pull up by squeezing my back, squeezing my lats, squeezing up with my biceps to get my chin over that bar, keeping my core nice and tight. And you want to ideally keep your legs as straight as possible throughout the whole time. If you would prefer to opt for the assisted pull-up machine, totally go for it. That's another great place to start. Then I went into a little superset for the arms on the cable machine. So I started with a tricep extension for three sets of 12 here. Very basic, but I'm keeping my core nice and tight. Still dropped my shoulders away from my ears as always with every single exercise. I'm keeping my elbows and my upper arm arms pinned towards my side. This is what's going to allow you to really isolate that tricep. So there should be nothing moving, only you driving your pinkies down towards the ground by squeezing your triceps. Keeping your elbows in that fixed position to your side will help you with a better mind to muscle connection and making sure that you're actually targeting and isolating that tricep muscle. So like I said, it's a superset. So right after that, I moved directly into, I don't really know what to call these. I'm going to call them like a leaning bicep curl. Did these as well for three sets of 12. Now this one is a little bit trickier. So if you want to opt for another bicep variation, go for it. But essentially I am at a slight lean, like a decline, if you will. And again, I'm keeping my elbows in a fixed position as if there is a rod going through my elbows. My upper arm is also completely still. The only thing that is moving is my forearms due to me driving my thumbs towards my face by squeezing my biceps. So you really need to concentrate there. I like it because it forces you to kind of have really good mind to muscle connection. You really need to concentrate to keep yourself in that position. You might need to go lighter than normal, but it's a really good exercise for that optimal mind to muscle connection. And then for the last superset of this exercise, I did seated lateral raises for three sets of 12. Now I've been liking seated lateral raises because it just forces you to eliminate momentum. And it kind of also forces you to have like a little better angle. So when I'm doing these seated lateral raises, I'm at a little bit of a forward torso lean. So I have a little bit deeper and better and further range of motion. And I'm not bringing my elbows out or my arms, my hands, excuse me, completely out towards my side. They're slightly forward in front of me just a skosh. So I'm not directly at like a T from my side. It's almost like a Y in front of me, if that makes sense. So it has a little bit of a different feel. I'm keeping that core nice and tight, still dropping my shoulders away from my ears to making sure that I'm not shifting the emphasis on my traps. And I'm really allowing myself to isolate that shoulder muscle. I'm stopping when my palms get basically parallel 
parallel to the floor. There's no reason to go any higher than that. So like I said, it is a superset. So after I did a set of 12, I went straight into bent over dumbbell reverse flies as well for 12 sets. This is to hit that back of the shoulder, which I really like. So now I'm bent over pretty much completely. My palms are pretty much directly perpendicular with my torso. My palms are facing towards the back of the room. And essentially you are leading this movement by driving your pinkies up towards the ceiling. Again, I'm not coming out directly at like a T or a 90 degree angle from my sides. It's more so like a Y towards the back of the room, if you will. I'm keeping a nice slight bend in my arm as well to protect my elbows. And I'm not coming up any higher than when my palms are about parallel with the ground. Feel free to go light. Feel free to slow down this movement to really hone in on that good mind to muscle connection. It is a small muscle, so it's gonna take a little bit more concentration to really feel the muscle working. And lastly, as a finisher to do a little horizontal push motion, I just did one set of push-ups for as many reps as possible. I did about like 20 or 25, I think. I just kind of went till I was like, okay, I'm all over it to be honest. Um, but with the push up, I'm keeping that core nice and tight. My pelvis tucked. I'm not letting my stomach sag or my butt go up towards the sky. I'm keeping it a nice plank position. And just like I've been saying with everything else, you want to have create some space between your shoulders, your collarbones, and your ears, right? You want to keep your neck in line with your spine. And you also don't want your elbows coming out at a direct 90 degree T from your sides, just like I've been saying, because we don't want that. That unnecessary stress on her shoulders. So my elbows are more so at about a 45 degree angle from my sides. If you were to look at me from above, I'm driving up through my palms. Hi, happy Wednesday. So it, let me show you what it's looking like outside. It's a snowy winter wonderland. It's been snowing for hours and it's gonna look like this all day long. But thankfully, Wednesday is my at-home workout day anyways. It's my Pilates day. Before I forget, I'm so happy I just remembered this. I didn't go for a walk yesterday, but I have been playing flag football. <laughs> bear with me. I kind of got swindled into playing it. It's like a co-ed team, so they needed girls. And it's honestly been fun. At first I wasn't vibing, and then now I like actually look forward to it, and I like enjoy the games because it like gives me, fulfills my little itch for like competitive sports, like what I played in high school. So anyways, the games last like 40 minutes, but like it gets me, you know, a dash or cardio of me running. Usually that's only once a week. So anyways, with that being said today, I'm most likely not gonna go for a walk. So what I'm gonna do instead is a Pilates session, which is what I normally do. And then I may do a little dance class here just at home. Lululemon Studio sent me their mirror which if you don't know what it is it's basically like kind of a peloton type situation but like in a mirror it's a whole entire workout mirror by lululemon and you can like see your reflection in it let's pull it up right now but you can also see there's like a class that comes through on your mirror and it connects like on an app this is not sponsored by any means but i did do work with them and that's why they sent this to me but I've been using it because it's honestly super convenient it's really fun and i do prefer this over youtube
All right, so class is done. So I think I'm gonna do a little 30 minute hip hop dance class because we're all about connecting to our inner child, having fun. So here we go. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. It depends if I like the dance. Sometimes the dance moves just like aren't a vibe. Like sometimes I'm like, let me choreograph. Like, what's up, you guys? How are we doing tonight? Welcome to Bad Ash Mirror After Dark. That was so fun. It got me a little sweaty, believe it or not. Heart rate's up. That was so much fun. Happy Thursday. It's so cold here. And I feel like this is gonna be, that's gonna be the only phrase that comes out of my mouth this winter, but I'm like, <sighs> we have so much snow and I'm gonna have to go shovel again and I'm freezing. So I decided to dress like an ice princess. This is my ice princess outfit in case you're curious. It's from Alfley, it's old, but I'm wearing, and it's leg day today, you guys, and I'm wearing leggings. Like, usually I wear shorts. If you guys remember a few days ago, I was really excited because I thought I got a package. Well, the package finally came and it did come in the mailbox. It actually was that same day. It was in the mailbox, just like I felt. Now is usually when I will take Oxystride is before leg day, and this is EHP Labs limited edition voodoo blackberry flavor that they launched for Halloween, which is a little bit late that I'm getting now, but it's fine. But we're gonna do a taste test quick. Ooh, I'm so curious for the color. <laughs> it is definitely expecting it to be purple, not pink, but this is fine. It smells so... Well, I don't know what it smells like. I was gonna say it smells so good. It smells exactly... Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is just nostalgic. That just hit me literally like a freaking plate of bricks. This smells like the Scooby-Doo gummy snacks. Tell me you know what I'm talking about. I haven't had those or seen those in probably a decade. Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. Whoa. You guys, I'm getting good at this comparisons. This tastes like, I'm getting more of a grape vibe. Definitely like grape X berry, which maybe that's where a blackberry is coming from. <laughs> and it's tasting like the hard sweet tart candies. Like it's, it's reminding me of these for some reason, like that purple one in the corner. Yes. I take this before, my leg days just because it helps give me a little bit of a caffeine boost, helps also give you more of a natural energy boost as well because it helps convert your fat cells to be used as ATP, which is your body's energy source. So it kind of gives me a little natural energy from that. Also just helps with focus and overall performance, helps with like enhancing mood. It just makes you feel really good, makes you feel really hyped, but without feeling like super cracked out and like super juiced up on caffeine or like the shakes or itchiness. Like you don't get any of that with OxyShed, which is what I really love. Live it 10 to save. Alrighty, I'm gonna call this the Ice Princess leg workout. So I did my normal mobility work, dynamic stretch, all that good stuff. It's pretty much was exactly the same as Monday, so I just didn't feel the need to show it again. So I started off with the hack squat machine here. So I did four sets total. The first set I did 12 reps. The next two sets I did eight reps, and then the last set I did 10 reps, and I was periodically increasing the weight. So again, starting off with my warm-up sets here, nothing crazy, just to work up to my working weight. So with the hack squat, since this is a machine, what's most important is your foot placement here. That's what's really going to completely transform this exercise. So I find when people's feet are too close to the bottom of the foot pad or too close to their glutes, they're not gonna feel it the same way. It's gonna be way more quad heavy, where if you bump your heels up towards the top portion of the foot pad, you're going to feel it more so in your glutes, which is personally my always my intention here. So I place my feet so that they're, again, pretty similar to being directly below my heel, excuse me, below my knee. That's also going to allow my shins to basically stay completely vertical throughout the whole movement. They're never gonna be at an angle down towards my toes. There's gonna be about a 90 degree angle constantly in my knee throughout the whole movement. And this is going to allow me to have a greater stretch in my glutes and therefore a greater range of motion and more overall emphasis on the glutes. I'm constantly driving up through my heels pretty much with any other leg exercise. I'm keeping that core nice and tight and I'm trying not to have my pelvis 
fall forward or shoot forward so that there's a gap in my lower back. I'm tucking my pelvis, having a posterior pelvic tilt, tilting that pelvis to the back of the pad to really allow my stomach to be pressed into that pad and keeping my core nice and tight. Surprise, surprise, we moved into hip thrusts. I swear on my life, like all summer, I was not consistent with them and now I've just been all over them, okay? So just let me be, these are the best exercise for booty gains and I will die on that hill. So I went into banded decline hip thrusts again. I did these for four sets total and I did one set for 12 reps and then I increased the weight and did three sets of 12. I started off with warm up sets again, as always to work up to my working weight. So I did one plate and then two plates for about like five to eight eight reps each. All the same form tips applies. As I said previously, you want to scrunch up your legs, make sure you're in the middle of the bar. I'm basically placing my heels to about where my knee creases when my legs are straight out. I'm driving up through my heels and my back into the bench to lift up that weight. My knees are about stacked over my heels. My chin is tucked towards my chest. I'm constantly looking forward. I'm having a scooping motion with my hips. I'm keeping my torso nice and strong and neutral in its fixed position. And I'm constantly pushing my knees outward against the band. My toes are a little bit pointed outwards as well. Play around with that if you would like to as well. But basically the importance of the band here is to help to activate our smaller glute muscles of the glute medius and minimus as well to incorporate that into this move. Constantly driving up through my heels. And the most important portion of a hip thrust is that full hip extension, meaning at the top of that hip thrust, you wanna choose a weight that is allowing you to shoot your hips all the way up to full extension at the top of the movement. If your weight is too heavy and you're only getting up about like 80% of the way, but you still have like an eighth of a thrust up to really make sure that you're completely locked out, then I really want you to decrease the weight. You want to be able to completely lock out at the top for most of your set to really make sure that you're getting the most out of the movement. From there, I moved into good old Bulgarian split squat. So I did three sets. First set, I did eight reps. And then I realized I was being a little, you know what? So then I did 10 reps for the last two sets. So a little life hack to make sure that you're getting in the correct position is to put, start from the lowered position. So have your dumbbells on the ground, have your knee stacked over your heel and then put that back leg on the bench from now so you know how far to stand away from the bench here there's a few different ways you can perform this so if you want this to be more glute bias what you're going to want to do is making sure that your knee is stacked over that ankle like i said your shin should be completely vertical throughout the whole movement your knee is basically in a fixed position it's not moving forward towards your toes and that's going to cause a greater stretch in your glute along with that having a slight forward torso lean so leaning a little bit towards your knee, not super over exaggerated, but a little bit as you come down is also going to help to increase that stretch in your glutes and increase the target. Another important tip here, the movement pattern isn't directly up and down. I always say to sink back and down into this lunge. So it's more of a diagonal of your coming back and down towards the bench as opposed to just directly standing up and down. That's what's going to allow you to have a better movement pattern to get more of a stretch in the glutes. I'm constantly driving up through my heels and keeping my core nice and tight. Neck is in line with the spine as well. And I'm driving up through that front leg's heel. I'm not pushing off that back leg's toe. Go down as low as you can. Range of motion is everything. That's what allows you to get the most out of the move. Then for some glute and hamstring focused, I went into glute cable pull throughs for three sets of 15. So foot placement is also going to be really important here. It's a little bit funky because the angle that you're going to be at. So play around with your foot placement, but the same concept and movement pattern here is the same as what I spoke previously about on Monday's workout with RDLs. It's also a hip hinging movement. So you're not just bending over, you're hinging at the hips by pushing your hips backwards, or you can picture someone's hands on your hips and they're pulling your hips back. That's causing your, your torso to bend and over to fold over. Slight but important detail, you wanna make sure that you're walking out far enough from the cable that you're never having the weight completely re-rack in the cable machine because that's what's going to keep constant tension, which is what we want. So again, pushing those hips back, shifting the weight onto our heels, keeping a slight bend in our leg to protect our knee, driving up through those heels, through your hamstrings, squeezing your glutes the whole time, and pretending like there is a board strapped to my back. There's no flexion in my back, there's no curving, there's no arching, my neck 
is in line with my spine. I'm not looking forward or upwards the whole time. I'm keeping my neck just completely in line with my spine and I'm driving up through my heels by squeezing my glutes. My hands are just simply hooks for the weight. As you can tell, my arms are not moving. They don't raise when I'm locking out at the top and pushing those hips to squeeze those glutes. They're keeping completely just steady, neutral. They're just simply hooks for the weight and I'm not shoving my hips forward at the top of the movement. I'm just tucking my pelvis, hollowing out my hips to have a nice little glute contraction. And from there to have some glute med work or that glute media, medius and minimus, those two smaller glute muscles kind of up and around your hips. This is great to help round out those glutes. That's why I really love to hit those smaller glute muscles. So I did a glute med kickback for three sets of 15, very similar to your generic cable kickback, but this is gonna be more so at a 45 degree angle. So I'm at an angle, I'm keeping a slight bend in my leg just to, again to protect my knee and have a more athletic stance. My spine is still nice and neutral. My neck is in line with my spine. Be mindful of swinging and having momentum. You want to go really controlled and pause for a nanosecond at the top of the kickback to really feel that squeeze in your glute. All right, dogs, welcome to Friday. I just pulled into my gym. It's a little bit later now. And there, I really thought that there wasn't gonna be a parking spot because there's so many cars here. And I, that's like not a thing at my, like you can always find parking. And I really, I was like, you gotta, <laughs> I was like, let's not get crazy, okay? Today is my full body functional day, full body functional Friday, just a lot of Fs. Um, and this is kind of my cardio component for the week, just honestly to overall help with my overall athleticism. It does get my heart rate up, so it does work my cardiovascular system, system, which I enjoy, but I just feel a lot more athletic when I have this in my routine. I find I feel very fluffy, kind of just flat and slow when I'm just solely weight training, so I really love adding this diversity in. And I also really like the contrast of this in comparison to like at home body weight low intensity pilates and then with my heavy lifting i just i really like all of the different components i guess that are in my weight training my excuse me my oh my gosh what is it called my workout split all right dudes this is the most bittersweet workout of the whole entire week i like love it because it's fun but i hate it because it's hard i just so many mixed feelings you know but i just did my normal warm-up pretty much very similar to leg day because i was sore from the leg day previously so i was just getting loose and then my favorite way to get into a full body circuit workout is by jump roping it gets my heart rate up and it sounds weird but it like loosens up my ankles like sometimes since i'm like you know this is my less frequent workout for the week like sometimes my body just isn't used in my ankles aren't used to moving in this way so I like to start with jumping rope gets me in the zone kind of gets me prepped for this athletic style training like I said this is my functional full body circuit for the day so I like to structure this in an EMOM fashion meaning that we're going to be doing exercises it stands for every minute on the minute so for every minute we're going to be doing an exercise for a certain amount of reps or or a certain amount of time and then whatever time you have left within that minute is your rest time and once the next minute begins begins that is when you start the next movement so I have a timer basically running on my phone we have eight exercises here and we're going to repeat this circuit three times so it's a total of about 24 minutes of actual exercising time you could choose to do these as continuous rounds but I tend to take like about a 60 to 90 second rest in between each round so our first exercise in this circuit is 12 burpee presses. So basically you're coming down into a plank, you're jumping up, bringing those dumbbells up towards the sky and shooting them up. So I'm using light dumbbells. The intention here for this day is not to lift as heavy as I can. It's pretty much just more so functional movements here, doing what I can to get me through the actual time and through the number of reps that I have allotted here. So this is just a great modification. If you wanna add in a push up for progression, go for it, otherwise just jump back into a plank bring those feet up to about where the dumbbells are tighten your core to lift up those dumbbells and then shoot them up towards the sky this is a great full body move getting the shoulders involved the core involved the legs really great full body workout so then i'm basically just going to be resting and prepping for the next exercise once the next minute begins so after that i grabbed the bosu ball and i'm going to do jumping lateral squats for 35 seconds i don't know what this is i think like i don't know if it's because the bosu ball is like unstable but this makes my legs burn like no other if you were to do this on normal ground you can but it does not it's not nearly as hard as doing it on the bosu ball it's crazy so i'm basically just kind of pivoting and i'm jumping up and replacing my one 
foot with the other one and going down into a nice big sumo squat and jumping back and forth, keeping that core nice and tight. So then again, I'm basically just resting and prepping for the next exercise for when the next minute begins. And since that was such a leg burnout, I moved into a more upper body focus exercise. So I did 10 to 12 push-ups to renegade rows. So basically like five rows on each side. So I'm doing a push-up, doing a row, another push-up and a row on the other side. So again, similar to push-up form, like I said, for the upper body day, my arms aren't coming out at a T from my sides. They're more so at a 45 degree angle. I'm not having my stomach sag towards the ground or my butt come up in the air. I'm keeping a nice fixed plank position. And when I'm going up into that row, I'm driving that dumbbell towards my hips while keeping my elbows tight towards my side to really isolate the, my lat muscle in my back. My neck is also in line with my spine. So I found myself doing 10 push-ups with the rows and then I would just do two push-ups after that without adding rows in just to kind of finish off. Then from there, I grabbed a little ball and I did 35 seconds of rotating toe taps. This is such a great one for footwork, kind of hand-eye coordination, if you will, because I tried to go through the whole 35 seconds without looking at the ball while constantly trying to make contact with my ball with with the ball with my feet excuse me so this is just another really great athletic style exercise here so again i'm trying to look up but constantly making contact with the ball with my feet this also will get your heart rate up while also kind of almost acting as a little bit more of an active rest period for your muscles because this is basically just targeting your cardiovascular and not recruiting too much of any muscle strength or anything like that then I was due for another upper body focus exercise. So then I did 10 to 12 dive bombers. It's kind of like a vinyasa. It like burns so much, but like feels good because I feel like I'm also getting such a good stretch in my upper body. It's it's odd, but you're basically going to come down like almost like how you would in a pike push up, kind of basically grazing the ground and then pushing up into an upward dog and then going back down into a downward dog and starting again. So don't knock this to you. Try it. It is such a burner on your shoulders. If you don't feel comfortable doing this movement, you can just a pike push up, which is essentially staying in that TP position and just doing a push up. So bringing your forehead to the ground and pressing right back up. Moving into something more leg focused, I did 20 kettlebell swings. Now form is really important here because these, these can get really sloppy and messy really quickly. So you want to stay pretty much tight and understand that the only movement is coming from your hips, right? So I'm pushing my hips backwards by also having a little slight bend in my leg, causing my torso to lean over, but I'm not just bending over with my torso, right? If that makes sense. And I am allowing the momentum of the kettlebell to kind of carry me through, but I'm exploring exploding through my glutes and my hamstrings to really push my hips forward, if you will, by contracting my glutes to get that kettlebell forward. I'm keeping my core nice and tight and I'm making sure that I'm not just swinging the kettlebell up with my arms. You really want that power and explosivity to be coming from driving up through your heels by squeezing your glutes to shoot that kettlebell forward. So then I finished off with two av movements here with a yoga ball. So I did 15 yoga ball tuck-ins as well. What I'm calling them. So same situation to what I've been saying about the push-up position. You want to be in a nice stable plank position. My stomach isn't sagging. My glutes aren't up towards the sky. I'm staying in a straight line and my hips are in a fixed position. So picture like a rod is running through your, hip, through your hips. There shouldn't be a lot of movement there. There should only be movement in bringing your knees, trying to shoot your knees to your chest as far as you can by contracting your glutes and bringing your belly button to your spine, keeping my neck in line with my spine. I'm not looking forward. And it's really important also where your feet is are placed on the ball. So I find that I want the ball to be right in the crease of my ankle so that my toes aren't like sliding off the ball. So then after that, I flipped over and I did about eight to 10 good mornings with that same yoga ball. So you're essentially going to lay on your back, put the yoga ball in between your ankles, and you're essentially just going to lift that yoga ball up and over, grab it with your hands, lift it up overhead, and then bring it up, reverse it, bring it from your hands to your feet and kind of continue that motion back and forth and the whole back and forth is one rep. So from your heels to your hands, from your hands back to your feet, that is one rep. So I did eight to 10 reps of those. Again, keep that core very nice and tight. You wanna contract your abs by bringing your ab muscles to your spine or picture it as sucking your belly button to your spine. That really helps to activate those ab muscles. So that is the last exercise of the circuit. So from there, like I said, I'll rest for like 60 to 90 seconds and then I will begin again for a total of running through this circuit three total times and then after that I just walked a lap around our indoor track to do a little cool down.
Happy Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday, obviously, if today's Sunday. And it was a full rest day yesterday. I was gonna go walk at the gym with my dad, but then we had a change of plans and I went to the grocery store instead. But today I do feel like getting some movement. So I'm just gonna go for a walk. I don't really know how long, but I'm kind of feeling like vibing up to some music and just walking. So definitely at least a half an hour walk and then maybe upwards to an hour. I don't know, we'll see how long ago if I get invested into a podcast or whatnot, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, that was, it was cold out there. It was windy, but I was so vibing, jamming to my music. And that was a longer walk. I went for like an hour, but like I said, I was pretty, like I was barely on my step game this whole entire week. So I could have used a long walk. It felt good. And since it was a rest day of mine, like usually when I am on top of my steps on a normal week, I'll do flatter, less intense walks. But as opposed to when it's like a rest day, to, like today, I'll have it be a little bit longer walk and a little bit more intense. So like today I walked more hills. And like I said, it was a longer duration. So just to kind of give you some context of what my walks look like. But yeah, that's everything for this week of workouts to maintain muscle and live a healthy, balanced life and have a fit physique. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. If you did enjoy it, it really, really, really helps out this video, reach more people and help more people and also help support my channel by giving this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you liked about the video, what you didn't like, what I'm gonna change when I do the next week of workouts. Any feedback you wanna leave me down below in the comment section is greatly appreciated. And also if you wanna see more videos from me, more week of workouts, Definitely subscribe because I'm posting two videos a week every Tuesday and Friday and these week of workout videos come out every so often So if you're wanting to see more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe and again Thank you guys so so much for all of your love and support I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out